Um, throw up your hands if you have a question. You are first in the back. Me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no. We don't even... Oh, no. That, that's not a good start. Oh, Let's bring someone else. else. <laughs> you guys burned in South Florida for a really long time. Yeah. Remember the girl who brushed the stage and jumped up and down oh, with Taylor Hansen? Um, no. No. Uh, is that you? Yeah. Well, you're very quick. Um, you don't have to apologize. Was that, was that the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, you are forgiven. Thank you. Okay. You're for but that not for the hear. fact that that wasn't a question. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the girl next to her. So if anybody didn't hear, she was saying she was yeah. sorry because she rushed the stage back in the day and hugged Taylor Hansen. I don't know who that is. But, um, it's funny you said it that way. Uh, but uh, you are forgiven. But please state your question in the form of a question. <laughs> Uh, the girl in the kind of pinkish shirt in the, with the dark hair. Yeah, Hinda. I want to know if Musical Ride was inspired by Neil Young's from Hank to Hendrix. That is a really good question. I'm wondering if, if the um, song Musical Ride was inspired by Neil Young's you know, song. I, I don't know. Um, the song originally started at Fool's Banquet during a jam session. Um, that's where just the original idea sort of popped out. And so I, I don't know. For, for me, it, it, I... I wouldn't say that, but it, maybe it's in there somewhere. He yeah. says he musical ride in that song. So. Well, you know, it's certainly a musical yeah. ride what we're on. <laughs> so I can understand how we both come to that same conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if, if we can reference it to Neil Young, I think that would be, you know, a good... A I'll good take thing. that comparison. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. But the answer is not directly. No. No. Right here, in the middle. No, but it's a really good astute thought, though, because of the other... <laughs> All the song references that we have in songs. I'm okay. oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> if you were going to hear the Christmas record ever. Uh, I'm very scared to say anything that remotely resembles us promising to do the Christmas record. But I will say this. We, for, ye for the last, especially the last five years, every year we've said, gosh, is this the year to do it? If there was a year to do it, it would be next year. So we're going to... We have lots of ideas of things we want to do. Um, to that is, that to is one of those things. Because next year will be 15 years since Snowed In and the Little Hour, which is scary, right? Uh, 20, 20 years since our first show that we did. And we, we've thought about it enough that we've even thought of what the title would be. Yeah. And we will not share it. It's, it's but when we decide about all of those details, I'm sure you will be the first to know. <laughs> Whether or not we actually tell it's, anyone or it's not. It's like we're talking in third person, too. And it's going to be kind of shot, shiny holiday balls. It's going to be two big, um, <laughs> two big ornaments. Hanson has decided. Hanson has had a conversation. <laughs> okay. Next question. Let's see. How about you, Rick? Thank you. I have the longest running birthday ever. <laughs> this is all year long. I just want to give you it like at six months before it goes to like can't, an early birthday and six months after it's belated. I'm, I'm up for it. <laughs> What's your favorite song on the album? On Shadow Album? On Shadow Well, you shouldn't know not to ask that question. It's a hard question to answer What's because the... you can't have a favorite. It's like saying, which one of your kids is your favorite kid? <laughs> And you're standing in front of your kids. And, and your kids are like, oh, pick me, pick me. Because they're in your mind. The songs can hear us. <laughs> Carrie there's like, you know you love me better. <laughs> Someone's gonna get pregnant tonight. <laughs> oh, is it? Never mind. It's okay. um, it involves Tracy Morgan, El Paso, Texas. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't got biscuits like LL. I got a loaf. <laughs> it's impossible to pick a song. I, I will name a couple songs that I'm. I mean, for one, I'm particularly proud of thinking about something because it, it pushed us in a certain direction with the record. And when I think of songs 
you know, that I would like for people to nip here that maybe have no idea what we're doing in the time capsule, I would put that one in there for sure because I think it, yeah. it says so much about where we come from, our influences, it pays homage to, you know, those things. And it's also one that I think and I hope, um, you know, will still be good in 25 years. I mean, you hope everything is, but that one, because of the rhythm and because of the swing and the fun of it and the fact that it, it also plays really well acoustic too because the piano, the keyboard moves so much with with the drums and the guitar. It just it, it's just like it just it's, it's feels so good. impossible to pick one song. I mean, they all carry different meaning. I mean, well, I, one of my favorites is "Carry You There," and probably part of the reason why "Carry You There" is one of my favorites is um, because it, it did come along early on in the process. It is kind of one of the anchors of the record, and also. Um, there's just the way we recorded it. It was just it was just drums, keys, and guitar. There was no bass involved, and it was just it, the dynamics of the three of us in the room trying to get that right, and trying to and and being very very conscious of the dynamic, you know, playing that you're doing, and whether or not you know you're digging into the guitar enough or not enough, whether or not the piano is you know what dynamics in, inverting the chord to make you know it more exciting at certain points and things like that. It just that song, when you listen to the th when you listen to the three primary parts that that song uh, was re recorded as in the initial recording, it it works the the right way, the way a song should work, and and also I also really am proud of all the guitar tones on this record in particular. <laughs> it's mostly all of Firebird. <laughs> yeah, interestingly. Um, almost all the guitars were recorded through one of those little Fender practice amps that are about this big that run on like what three AA batteries or a nine volt battery. Or nine volt like battery. There's several guitar main guitar parts. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, let's see, "Kiss Me When You Come Home," "Voice in the Chorus." Uh, so you keep so thinking about it. I'll get someone to ask another question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are real problems. Okay, any questions over this? Make it out loud. Okay, you got two hands, so sorry guys. She was going like this. She's doing her own wave. Glasses waving. Okay. Um, I've been using Blake Lee pretty much sucks. I can change my range. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I just want to make sure I hit it right. Okay. okay. She said, we like any people that are our ages. Who would we collaborate with right now? That's out? Um, early on, I remember hearing Bruno Mars and being like, what an amazing voice. Um, I think he, he'd be a lot And then fun. he kept putting out songs. Yeah. He is still an amazing voice. I just don't think he's figured out a very, very good song. But, um, he wants to be a billionaire. That's awesome. Um, who doesn't? Does, does he know that the, the grenade thing, like, that doesn't quite... Okay, Zach's like, I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, he would be amazing to sit down and write an iconic song with, with him singing. I think he'd be really fun. Um, somebody said Justin Bieber. I would love to write with Justin Bieber. I think, I, think he, I think he's a really... It's sort of the same way. I think he's got a great voice. I don't think he's written... I don't think he's done a really great song. Um, and I just, I don't think that that song that you'll remember years down the line is, has been I mean, put out here. He's but. definitely, he's definitely really talented. Um, well, there's this girl that I tweeted about a lot, which I think she has an incredible amount of potential. This is girl, Anna, Anna Graceman, that was on uh, America's Got Talent. She is legit. And, and you, because you watch her... <laughs> girl, girl, I'll tell you, she's from the hood! <laughs> No, she's not. She's actually from the complete opposite of the other man. But, um, but, but you watch her, and she's, what, 11, 12 years old. She gets up on stage. The poise and confidence and skill that she has is really, really impressive. And, and also the fact that actually a bunch of the songs that I listen to that she's written are actually quite good. And so she clearly has a future in music. What I like about her is you watch her and you go, okay, she's young and that's part of why people are really excited about her right this second. But the cool thing about her is she will be doing it when she's 25 and it will be great then too. In fact, it will be better. So Anybody else? Um, unfortunately, Adele is doing surgery on her vocal cords. So that, just for all of you, we don't want to call her up and tempt her with wanting to write and do stuff with us. 
Exactly. That was us being facetious. Um, other bands, that, there's a lot of friends that we have that we've never actually done stuff with that we've talked about, which would be, you know, people like Butch Walker who'd love to do something with them next year, or, or Dan Wilson, um, you know, anyway. Yeah, Charlie Mars. Woo! Be fun to make some music with. Yeah. Um, so anyway, long answer. Let's get some more. One up right here, you were even massaging your shoulder. It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Um, talking about Adele and everything, you yeah. guys Do we get jealous of other people's songs that we hear on, on the radio or Let's just say these days less often than, than I like. <laughs> I'd like to be more jealous of that. Um, I think I think it's true. Yeah, you do in a in a in a relatively healthy way. You get you know you you can hear a song and go, damn, that is good, and go, I wish I would have written that. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, that's partly the challenge that it's like an, a, an artist or an athlete or anything like that. Having something to run, you know, to compete with is a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Chris Martin seems like maybe he need to exercise some demons, but um, <laughs> I think I think that's part of the process. Yeah, for sure. You have you see things and you go, that's really great. I want to try that or I want to be a part of that or I want to. Maybe beat that. Think, well, you I hear, hear to me, stories. it's more of a, um, it's not I wish I wrote that and I'm so mad I didn't. It's more like, oh, I can write that. I should write that. Let's write it now. Let's do it. It's more of a motivating factor, not a, yeah. not sort of jealousy. Yeah, yeah. only in the back of the I, And I would actually say, yeah, like, it's inspiring. This one. Yeah. It inspires you. Right? Yeah. Um, as a fan who goes to a lot of shows, we obviously, some fans obviously interpret songs differently, yeah. and Musical Ride for me is one of the best songs because it changes the life that I thought I was going to lead and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was just wondering um, what that song, how you wrote it, and in what perspective you wrote it, like as mm -hmm. a fan perspective or as a band perspective. And then I also just want to add at the very end that we love Charlie Mars and we hope that you invite him to come on the Canadian yeah, tour. Yeah, he's been amazing. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I think we're uh, doing that question. But, but yeah, she's question. asking about Musical Ride and sort of what perspective we wrote it from. And um, it's, You know, I think Musical Ride, it's hard for it not to be both perspectives. I think we talk about how we're fans first. Obviously, we're musicians, and, and the choice to be musicians has taken us on an interesting ride. You know, even we were doing an interview, and I was saying, you know, we, we chose we wanted to be musicians, but we've been a lot of places that we didn't know we'd end up going trying to reach that destination. You know, the song says, you pick the destination, I'll pick the road. So um, I think it's, it's a lot about about all all of that. I mean, our, our experiences as fans of music and where that's taken us, and also uh, a lot being a band and, and spending a lifetime being a band, trying to live this life, this crazy thing, this, this music. Very cool. Thank you. I'm going to pass on to Charlie. Your love. Okay. Um, you got two people working together. I always appreciate teamwork. Probably only two more questions. Okay, right there. Jumping. <laughs> 